What's up, guys? This is Alexander, obviously. Uh, so, question I it wasn't really a question, but I felt like talking about this, honestly. My man Gabe posted some pretty excellent squats this morning of him squatting 295 for reps. They were good squats, it was pretty good technique. He had something of a low bar technique, and you know, with kind of started a discussion, so to speak, of low bar versus high bar. You know, which one do you choose? Hold on, I'm about to go through drive through right now. Yep. So, low bar versus high bar. Oftentimes, these conversations get framed as sort of being diametric, you know, opposites. They're in opposition to each other. You either pick one or the other. There you go. That's not the case. Thank you. Um, low bar versus high bar. You know, the simple fact of the matter, the simple answer, it comes down to whatever works best for you. Some people will find that a higher bar position is more comfortable, it's more stable, it feels more natural based upon their body structure, their own individual mechanics, so they favor a high bar squatting position. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Some people go with a low bar squat position because they feel that that is a much stronger position for them. They get more, you know, as has been said, posterior chain activation. That's more stable. That feels more natural. And some people do both. Some people will switch between low bar and high bar and they kind of experiment and they end up with something of a middle ground position that let's say you call it mid bar. All of these are correct. All of them are correct. So if you are interacting with a coach who's advocating one over the other, I'm not gonna say he's wrong, but he's not entirely right. You can find representative examples of very strong world record squatters, and they're doing all manner of bar positions. You'll find guys that are high bar, you'll find guys that are low bar, you'll find guys that are basically good morning their squats, but they're incredibly strong. You'll see guys that are freakishly upright, and they're dropping it down low, and they are, you know, they are incredibly strong. Everything works. Everything does work. So the advocation of there being a singular way to squat in only one way, that's where I call bullshit. There's not just one way to do something. There's multiple ways to do the same thing, and what works best for anybody is going to come down to contextual application of technique, the principles of technique, and then how they suit your body. So high bar or low bar? try out both of them and see. Some people do find that low bar, they are much stronger at it. Some people find that low bar is uncomfortable on the shoulders, it compresses the shoulder joint, it, feel, it just feels weird, and high bar is the way to go. You have to be willing to experiment with this stuff. And you might find that you can do both and maybe it could be useful for you to incorporate both into your training. The bodybuilders are usually pretty infamous for squatting very high bar and they've got massive leg development. And bodybuilders, at least the good ones, they're pretty strong. Uh, low bar powerlifters, they will, powerlifters in general, they oftentimes squat low bar. They also have usually pretty decent leg development, not necessarily complete, but pretty solid, and they're very strong as well. Both forms, so to speak, both techniques, they're both going to create their own potential issues, at least in the manner of high bar squatting isn't going to quite hit the posterior chain in the same fashion. Low bar squatting isn't going to quite hit the anterior chain in the same fashion. So you're gonna to have to account for the compensations or you're gonna to have to account for the areas of neglect and then address those in your training. If you squat low bar, you're probably gonna to wanna to incorporate some quad work. If you squat high bar, you're probably gonna to want to incorporate some more posterior chain work. There's trade-offs to each, but again, they all work. And finding your middle ground, it's gonna be your own personal middle ground. So that's the rundown on it. Hopefully that you know, got it out of your head if you're thinking that you do one or the other. How can I get more definition outside and push my triceps? Uh, if you hit lack, I, so I'm just gonna answer all the questions real fast, or at least that one real fast. If you lack definition in any muscle, it's because that muscle is small and weak. Now you can break it down into segmental sections and figure out, you know, why your, let's say, short head of the tricep is underdeveloped. But on a fundamental level, any muscle that's not prominent or not appearing prominent, it's small and you haven't trained it enough and you haven't trained it effectively. That's it. That's it, that's the fast answer. You know, that's for you guys, it's like, well, how come my lower chest, upper chest, blah, 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 blah. Guess what, you're not that big and strong yet, you need to keep training. All right, I'm done. No questions for this one, guys. I got a rehearsal to go to, just wanted to knock that out. And uh, for my man Gabe, keep squatting, dude, your squats look fucking awesome. So, props to you. Adios, guys.